Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon, thanks. So now, can you believe it, folks? King Charles has finally done what we've all been secretly hoping for. He stripped that troublemaker Meghan Markle of her royal titles. It's about time, if you ask me. I mean, how much more damage did she need to do before someone put their foot down? Now, I know some of you might be thinking, isn't this a bit harsh? But let me tell you something. When it comes to protecting the monarchy, there's no such thing as too harsh. This isn't some reality TV show where you can just waltz in, cause drama, and waltz out again. This is the British royal family we're talking about. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? Cast your minds back to that fateful day in May 2018. There we all were, glued to our televisions, watching Harry our beloved ginger prince, tie the knot with the Hollywood actress Meghan Markle. Oh, how mave we were. We thought we were witnessing a fairy tale. Turns out, it was more like the opening scene of a horror movie. From day one, Meghan was like a bull in a china shop. Or should I say, a D-list actress in a royal palace. She came in with her woke ideas and her American ways, thinking she could change centuries of tradition overnight. Honey, that's not how it works in the royal world. And poor Harry, our cheeky, lovable spare, turned into a shell of his former self. It's like she cast some sort of spell on him. I swear, one minute he's the life of the royal party, the next he's spouting off about genetic pain and living his authentic life in California. Give me a break, but let's talk about King Charles for a sec. Can you imagine being in his royal shoes right now? The man's barely had time to warm the throne, and he's already having to make these massive decisions. Stripping his own daughter-in-law of her titles? That's not just burning bridges, that's napalming them. But you know what? Good for him. It's about time someone put their foot down. The monarchy isn't some Netflix series where you can just opt in and out whenever you feel like it. It's an institution, darling, with responsibilities and duties. If Meghan can't handle the heat, she needs to get out of the royal kitchen. And let's not forget all the damage she's done. The Oprah interview. Oh my days, where do I even start with that car crash? Accusations of racism, claims of feeling trapped, suggestions that there were concerns about baby Archie's skin color. It was like watching a bomb go off in slow motion. Each revelation another blow to the royal family's reputation. Then there was the Netflix docuseries. Six hours of woe is me packaged up with slick production values and moody lighting. It was less a documentary and more a very expensive therapy session. And don't even get me started on Harry's book, Spare. More like spare us the details, am I right? It's been one hit after another, each one chipping away at the dignity and mystique of the royal family. At this point, they might as well be the Kardashians with better accents and bigger houses. But here's the thing that really gets my goat. Meghan knew what she was getting into. She wasn't some naive teenager being thrust into the spotlight. She wasn't Lady Diana Spencer, all wide eyes and shy smiles. No, Meghan was a grown woman, an actress for crying out loud. She should have known that marrying into the royal family wasn't going to be all tiras and tea parties. The royal family comes with a job description longer than the coup for the throne room. It's not just about looking pretty in designer outfits and waving to the crowds. It's about service, about putting duty before self, about being a symbol of national unity. It's about keeping your mouth shut when you'd rather scream, about smiling when you'd rather cry, about showing up day after day, rain or shine, to open hospitals and Christian ships and shake hands with endless lines of people. And Megan, well, she seemed to think she could cherry pick the best bits and leave the rest. All of the privilege, none of the responsibility. All of the fame, none of the scrutiny. All of the power, none of the constraints. Sorry, love, but that's not how it works in the royal world. Now, I know some people will say I'm being harsh. They'll say Meghan was just trying to be herself, to bring some fresh air into a stuffy institution. But let me tell you something. When you marry a prince, you're not just marrying the man, you're marrying the whole kit and caboodle the good, the bad, and the ceremonial. You can't just waltz in, decide you don't like how things are done, and try to change centuries of tradition overnight. And don't even get me started on how she's supposedly modernizing the monarchy. 
Honey, the monarchy has been around for over a thousand years. It doesn't need your Hollywood makeover. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean. The British monarchy isn't perfect, but it's a symbol of continuity, of stability in an ever-changing world. It's about duty, service, and putting the needs of the nation before your own. It's about being a figurehead, a rallying point, a living link to our history and our heritage. Meghan seemed to think she could turn it into some sort of platform for her own brand of celebrity activism. But that's not what the monarchy is about. It's not about being a star. It's about being a servant. It's not about speaking your truth. It's about embodying the nation's values. It's not about changing the institution. It's about being changed by it. And Harry. Oh, Harry. 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 What happened to you, love? Remember when he was just the cheeky spare, always good for a laugh and a wild night out? Now he's like a walking, talking therapy session. It's exhausting. I mean, I get it. Growing up royal can't be easy. The constant scrutiny, the pressure, the weight of history on your shoulders. But come on, mate, you had it pretty good. Palaces, servants, the adoration of millions, and you threw it all away for what? a podcast deal, and a chicken coop in Montecito. It's like he's forgotten who he is, where he comes from. He was born into incredible privilege, yes, but also into incredible responsibility. He was raised to serve, to represent, to be a symbol of the nation. And now, now he's just another celebrity, whining about his problems on Oprah's couch. But back to King Charles. I've got to hand it to him. He's got some royal cajuns to make this move. Stripping Meghan of her titles is like the nuclear option of royal punishments. It's saying, right, you want out. Here's the door. Don't let the crown hit you on the way out. And you know what? It needed to be done. The constant drip 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 of royal tea spilling from the Sussex camp was getting ridiculous. Every other week it was some new revelation, some new slight, some new reason why the royals were the worst thing since unsliced bread. It was damaging not just to the royal family, but to the institution of the monarchy itself. And let's be clear, the monarchy is bigger than any one person. It's bigger than Charles, bigger than William, bigger than Harry and Meghan. It's a thousand-year-old institution that's weathered wars, revolutions, and scandals galore. It'll survive this too, but not without taking decisive action. But here's the real tea. The royal family isn't perfect. No family is. But most families don't have to air their dirty laundry in front of the entire world. Can you imagine if your family squabbles were front-page news? If every passive-aggressive comment at Christmas dinner became an international incident, it would be a nightmare. And that's what Meghan never seemed to understand. Being royal isn't just about the fancy hats and the ribbon-cutting. It's about discretion, about keeping a dignified silence, even when you're seething inside. It's about putting the institution before yourself. It's about keeping calm and carrying on, even when you'd rather tell the whole world to sod off. But not our Megan. Oh no, she had to speak her truth. She had to live authentically. Well, darling, sometimes living authentically means keeping your mouth shut and getting on with the job. The Queen managed it for 70 years, for heaven's sake. And let's talk about that Oprah interview for a hot second. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you, accusing the royal family of racism of neglecting your mental health, of basically being the worst family since the Borges. It was a bridge too far, if you ask me. I mean, think about poor Charles. One minute he's welcoming his new daughter-in-law with open arms, walking her down the aisle when her own father couldn't make it. The next, she's basically accusing him of running some sort of royal prison. No wonder he's finally snapped. But you know what really gets me? The hypocrisy of it all. Meghan and Harry are all. We want our privacy one minute, then the next, they're splashing their lives all over Netflix. They're all the press is so mean to us. Then they're doing tell-all interviews and writing kiss-and-tell memoirs. Make up your minds, folks. And don't even get me started on the titles. They're so against the monarchy, so determined to break free from the golden handcuffs, but they still want to cash in on being the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Well, not anymore, sweetheart. You can't have your royal cake and eat it too. Now, I know some people will say I'm being unfair. They'll say Meghan was just trying to protect her mental health, that she was facing racism and hostility from day one. And look, I'm not saying the British press is always a basket of roses. 
They can be brutal, no doubt about it. But come on, every royal bride faces scrutiny. Kate did, Camilla did, even beloved Diana did. It's part of the job description. But Meghan couldn't hack it. Instead of keeping calm and carrying on, she decided to take her ball and go home. And not just go home, but burn every bridge on the way out. And poor Harry, I honestly believe he's been brainwashed. The Harry we knew and loved would never have turned his back on his family like this. He was always so close to William, to his father, to the Queen. Now he's like a stranger, parroting Californian therapy speak and acting like he's some sort of woke warrior. But you know what? Maybe this is the wake-up call he needs. Maybe having Meghan stripped of her titles will finally make him realize what he's thrown away. Because let's be real, without those royal connections, what are they? Just another couple of celebrities in a town full of them. And let's not forget about the kids. Poor Archie and Lilibet, caught in the middle of all this drama. Will they ever know their royal relatives? Will they grow up thinking their family in England is some sort of evil empire? It's heartbreaking, really. But at the end of the day, the monarchy will survive. It survived far worse than a balshy actress with delusions of grandeur. The Windsors are made of stern stuff, and King Charles is showing he's got what it takes to steer the ship through these stormy waters. So what's next for Meghan and Harry? Will they finally shut up and enjoy their freedom? Will they keep lobbing grenades at the palace from across the pond? Or will they come crawling back, tails between their legs, begging for forgiveness? Only time will tell, my friends. But one thing's for sure, this royal drama is far from over. And you know what? Part of me is living for it. It's like the world's poshest reality show, and we've all got front row seats. But let's take a moment to think about the bigger picture here. What does all this mean for the future of the monarchy? Is this the beginning of the end, or a necessary pruning to ensure the institution's survival? On one hand, you could argue that this whole saga has done irreparable damage to the royal brand. The accusations of racism, the suggestions of callousness towards mental health issues, the portrayal of the royals as cold and uncaring, it's not a good look, is it? But on the other hand, maybe this is exactly what the monarchy needed. A chance to draw a line in the sand, to say this far and no further, to show that being royal isn't just about the perks, it's about the responsibilities too. And let's not forget, the monarchy has survived far worse. It's survived wars, abdications, divorces, and scandals galore. It's an institution that's been around for over a thousand years. It's not going to crumble because of one actress from Los Angeles, but it does raise some interesting questions about the role of the monarchy in the 21 saint century. In an age of social media and instant gratification, can an institution based on tradition and duty still resonate with people? Can it adapt to changing times without losing its essential character? King Charles certainly seems to think so. By taking this drastic step, he's sending a clear message. The monarchy is here to stay, and it's not going to be pushed around. He's drawing a clear line between those who are in and those who are out. And you know what? I think a lot of people will respect him for it. In a world where it often feels like no one stands for anything anymore, there's something admirable about an institution that says these are our values, take them or leave them. But what about the public? How will they react to this latest development? Will they side with Harry and Meghan, seeing them as victims of an outdated and oppressive system? Or will they rally around the king, seeing him as a strong leader protecting a valuable national institution? My guess is that it'll be a bit of both. There will always be those who see the monarchy as outdated and irrelevant, but there will also be those who value the sense of continuity and tradition that it provides. And let's not forget the international angle. The British royal family isn't just a national institution. It's a global brand. People around the world are fascinated by the royals, even if they don't fully understand the intricacies of the system. How will this play out on the world stage? Will it damage Britain's image abroad, or will it be seen as a strong move, a refusal to be held hostage by the whims of two individuals? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, the eyes of the world will be on Buckingham Palace in the coming weeks and months. Every move, every statement, every public appearance will be scrutinized and analyzed to death. And what about William and Kate in all this? They've been noticeably quiet throughout this whole saga, but you can bet they're watching closely. After all, they're next in line. 
how they handle this situation could set the tone for their own reign. So far, they've played it perfectly. They've kept their heads down, focused on their duties, and presented a united front. They're the very model of what modern royalty should be, dignified, dedicated, and discreet. In many ways, they're the antithesis of Harry and Meghan. Where Harry and Meghan sought the spotlight, William and Kate seemed content to let their work speak for itself. Where Harry and Meghan complained about the burdens of royal life, William and Kate seemed to embrace their roles with grace and dignity. It's a stark contrast, and one that I think will serve William and Kate well in the long run. They're showing that it's possible to be royal and relevant, to uphold tradition while also moving with the times. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's still a long way to go before William takes the throne. For now, all eyes are on King Charles. How he handles this situation could define his reign. Will he be remembered as the king who stood firm in the face of adversity, who protected the institution of the monarchy at all costs? Or will he be seen as the king who drove his own son away, who couldn't adapt to changing times? It's a delicate balancing act, and one that Charles will have to navigate carefully. But if there's one thing the royals are good at, it's playing the long game. They think in terms of centuries, not news cycles. So, my dear royal watchers, what do you think? Has King Charles made the right move? Is this the end of the road for Harry and Meghan's royal journey? Or is there still a way back for them? Whatever happens, one thing's for sure. We'll be watching every step of the way. So grab your popcorn, straighten your tires, and settle in. Because this royal drama is far from over. And darling, it's going to be a wild ride. So what do you guys think about this news? Please share your thought and let me know what you think. Until then, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.